Well, hello from Thailand. Uh, today I just get, came back from a, uh, a street market here in Chiang Mai, Thailand um, called Sompet, Talat Sompet. Um, what struck me is that the number of uh, tour groups going through at least three different groups of uh, tourists coming from uh, uh, cooking schools. Now they have uh, cooking schools for tourists who, who come to Thailand and like a two-day or one-day uh, class and they can have a chance to learn exactly about um, Thai cooking uh, in an authentic manner. Uh, so part of the class is they will lead them through a market and help them pick out ingredients and identify them and, and so on and so forth. Um, so I was in this market and I saw three of these tour groups going through and they all have either aprons or hats with the name of the cooking school that they're on. Yeah, it's kind of amusing. Um, uh, but the particular thing about the, this particular market, and I think maybe the reason that they're dealing with cooking schools is that this market has a large variety of fruits and vegetables. Everything that is in season can usually be found there. And so it's becoming my sort of my favorite uh, go-to place for uh, uh, weird fruits and vegetables. And it will be, I'll go back there in, in person and, and check it out for you. Um, let's see, uh, it's also well picked up and clean. I mean, there's, there's certain markets, native markets here in Thailand that are um, a little bit off-putting for Americans or Westerners or people from first world countries who expect everything to be hygienic. Uh, some of these markets uh, smell like rotten meat and things like that, so it's not so sexy. Uh, but this particular one is, is pretty nice for in, in that regard. Um, anyway, let me show you what I picked up at some pet market, and uh, I'll share with you something about its characteristics. Here we go. That's quite a bit. Now, if you look at these, the typical fruit is covered by small, uh, some sort of leaf-like structures. I'll try to get that a little closer. Perhaps we can see it. And if I pull away this leaf-like structure here, I come out with a small orange spherical fruit here. And uh, they're all like this. They're all sort of cloaked with these little petals. Yeah, let me take it off here. Yeah, just detach. There's a, a stem that detaches from the middle here. Um, and uh, yeah, checking out the smell of these things. Uh, let's just get a close-up of whole bowl. What I'll do is I'll bring it home and leave it in the refrigerator or the freezer for a few minutes to cool it off because I think these are a lot. Just about every fruit and vegetables, if you're eating it raw, is tastier and it's been chilled a little bit. So I'm going to try this out here. This is called a um, Cape Gooseberry. And uh, at this moment, I don't recall the, the Thai name for it, but I'll give you to it right here if I can, at least the uh, scientific name. Hmm. Now, when we have eaten some obscure exotic fruit for the first time, our expectations sort of collide with reality. This is not particularly sweet. A little bit. Maybe two or three on a scale of one to ten, with a sugar cube being ten.
It is tart. It's very tart. Uh, medium tart. Okay, let's say about five. I'll say it this way. There's a tartness that hits you right away. Then it fades away pretty quickly. So it neutralizes easily. I tried this the first time more than a year ago when I first came to Chiang Mai. Uh, 2017 and I was a little bit disappointed by it maybe the ones I was eating at that time were not as sweet as I expected like I said the um, expectations that we have when we, eat a, when we eat a tropical fruit for the first time, we expect some sort of exotic papaya, mango, you know, tutti-frutti taste that's out of this world. And they're all on their own schedule, and they all have their own peculiarity. But when I first tried this, and I said, gee, they taste just like cherry tomatoes. So I happened to be in some pet market and picked up some cherry tomatoes. And I can sort of do a side-by-side -side taste comparison, which is the really sort of the first time I've done this. Which one is which? Hmm? Um, obviously, the red one is the tomato. But they do have different colored tomatoes here, too. That's sort of a a thing they want to have orange yellow green cherry tomatoes they can mix up in the recipe the size and form is very similar same degree of plumpness i'd say that cherry tomato is a little bit more firm even crunchy Mm hmm And the tomato is juicier. As soon as you bite it, you get a splooge of liquid in your mouth. But about the same degree of tartness. It's really quite interesting. very parallel and I don't know how to say that but the um, tomato has a, a brighter flavor there's something kind of uh, not bright about this it doesn't have as much flavor Oops. <laughs> Actually, the cherry tomato is sweeter than the uh, Cape Gooseberry. Very kind of interesting. But I think you could probably replace cherry tomatoes and many recipes with Cape Gooseberry. Could maybe make some, I don't know, ketchup or let's see, what would you have? As a salad, you could slice these up and put in a salad, and people would say, hmm, something unique about those. Okay, the Cape Gooseberry is sweeter. The flavor is not so strong, it is not as tart as the tomato. 
I think that's what we're going with. Uh, anyway, that's my little comparison of Cape gooseberries with uh, cherry tomatoes. Hope you found this interesting. And uh, if you're ever in Chiang Mai, give me a call. I'll take you on a little tour. Um, to the best of my ability. Anyway, uh, over and out. Thanks again for watching.